Good day, good day. We are back at it, James and I. Today, you know, I'm not going to lean into it like it's a serious conversation because I feel like most conversations we have are serious in their nature. But I will lay out the uh, the disclaimer that this could be a more charged conversation uh, for some people to listen to than other ones because today we have a conversation about the uh, the time and tested age old shelling point of uh, racism or maybe I should better say colorism right tribalism because ultimately at the end of the day if we're talking exclusionary frameworks and inclusion inclusive frameworks so many different things fall in that category Uh, but for the purpose of this conversation we're basically going to talk about race and color and uh, some issues or the perception about what the issues are, and then routes towards some type of optimum resolution, which I, I have no, you know, illusions that we will get to the answer in this here brief conversation. But the reason we're talking about this is because when we were getting set up, you brought to my attention a conversation you had at the gym with a, a buddy of yours. Could you, could you share us? Yeah, so uh, post-workout, I was talking to somebody that uh, I see basically on a regular basis, has more melanin in his skin than I do. Uh, I go to a gym, love the gym. I am of the minority in said gym. There's like seven or eight white people, and I'm one of them. Nothing wrong with that at all, but it brought up an interesting conversation because we began, it started a little bit talking about, um, you know, the oppression of, of certain groups by the law, by law enforcement. Uh, and we kind of then started going down a path of the difference in ethnicity, nationality, uh, and the color of your skin, and how there is, there is some intersection with all those, but they're looked at in a lot of ways as synonyms. And, and we kind of expounded on a, a few different theories for, for what has gone on, but I think that this conversation calculated for us to discuss some of those things, some of our own individual thoughts, uh, is necessary because it has been brought to my attention many times by people that listen to this podcast that they would like to hear what my co-host, who is black, <laughs> thinks about race. Oh, man. Yeah, so, you know, added a little disclaimer there. I'm not a historian. I'm not an academic. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm not, but I am somebody of darker coloration, higher pigmentation, melanation, have been my whole life and spent the vast majority of my life living in what some people would call the deep South. Like no one in the South ever uses that term though. Uh, and right. And so I think a good starting place is That effectively, I think the reason that there is discussions about oppression uh, or systematic injustice is because historically those things have existed. There's been oppression, there's been discrimination, there's been injustice. Uh, You know, not too long ago was the, I think it was the 100th anniversary of the uh, Tulsa massacre, Black Wall Street. And a lot of these things were on people's minds. We have a lot of the, the highly publicized incident with George Floyd, among many, many other people. And I, I feel like it's just things have gotten to a boiling point, not just in the black community, but in any community that feels they are getting a disproportionate amount of oppression in their community relative to what we would call the standard of non-oppression, which is white, right? For the basis of this conversation and how I see the framework. The thing that I want to just contribute my two cents to as a, you know, just for the nomenclature, a black person, right? We are not colors, though, so let that stand on the record, Uh, is there's many sides and many ways to approach the, the conversation, and one should enter it with some degree of intention behind what they hope to be the outcome. And I think that in most cases, the outcome that people are desiring is better opportunity. And the word that gets thrown around a lot is equality. And and that is the word that I want to use. But different people will have different outcomes. 
And I think what people want is equal opportunity in a lot of ways. Um, even if people are, obviously individuals can be seeking something different in their own. You have some people calling for X solution, some people calling for Y. But I think most people can agree equal access of opportunity is pretty fair. That's pretty non-controversial. Equality of opportunity, not equality There you go. And as it stands, just this once again, my perspective, when we begin, once again, one needs to know what the outcome is. And just so we can get this out of the way so we can move further into the conversation, I do want to address the fact that there has been a precedent set culturally and socially that can make people a little bit removed, detached from their own ancestral lineage. And all I mean by that is, over time, I'll just use this as an example. If we're talking in reference to black people, right? But once again, as a color, we've had different terms be used. We've had colored, we've had Negro, nigger, nigger, uh, black, African American, Afro American. And then you have a bunch of other slurs and just goofy shit, right? But in an official context, we have run through many different names for what is theoretically the same group of people. Now, the only thing I would like to challenge people with is this assumption that that is actually a reference to the same group of people. Reason being, once again, it's like the 10th time it's been said, black, white, these are colors. And they happen to be the two most frequently referenced colors as if there are no other colors in the crayon box. Yet, when we talk about certain groups of people, we reference them by nationality, by ethnicity. They don't too often get the color treatment, even though they have a color. The result of this trend is that a lot of people have been disconnected or are now confused about who they are. Once again, this might be controversial to some people. There are a lot of people who walk around because they have been conditioned to refer to themselves and to others of their similar color as African-Americans, which by definition necessitates that there is African lineage and heritage. Now, you go to Jamaica, you can go to Brazil, you can go to Cuba, and you can find people who are darker than me, blacker than me. I'm like a really dark brown or red, like a reddish dark brown. I'm not black. I've met a few black people. <laughs> Just like I met a few white people. <laughs> but most people are not truly those colors. And so even by the name of African-American being pushed into people's minds, there's this association and this tie to being African. Where in reality, once again, we're not colors, but black might be a better way to reference this person because then it is only referring to what they look like phenotypically and not necessarily this deeper assumption on their actual lineage. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing for anybody. This isn't what this whole conversation is about. Maybe we should dedicate an episode to this uh, topic, but I, I lay that groundwork so that people can all uh, come out the gate perhaps thinking more deeply to themselves about who it is they are and who their people are. And once again, for context, people need to set some type of boundary on what lineage means. Because some people, I've gotten in many discussions with folks like, well, we all from uh, you know, X, Y, Z. And I'm like, all right, bro. If that's the case, let's just look up and be like, all right, we all come from those. We all stars. We all stardust, right? We come from protozoa. All right, maybe go back three, four hundred, five hundred years if you can and see who were your people then. And I think that's an okay place to, to park your flag. All right, some people may disagree with that. It is what it is. We're, we're proceeding along. But the reason that's so important is because there is a hyper focusing oftentimes on certain oppression of certain people. So let's just call it African people, right? A lot of groups have been oppressed throughout history. And I'm not downplaying the oppression of any group. But it almost becomes a way that certain people can use to know that it will trigger somebody if they can frame up a conflict with a certain lens. 
Whether that be, oh, look what we're doing to the African people, look what we're doing to the black people, look what we're doing to the gay people, to the transgender people. Any group. And there is a, to an extent, there's a value in that. History, right? Knowing, okay, it's good to be aware of things like what happened at Black Wall Street and how they killed and murdered what was a thriving financial cultural ecosystem that was built entirely off the backs of those people who happened to be black. Because a lot of people don't know that. There's value in knowing different pivotal events in the history of a group of people for various reasons. But eventually there comes a point where we can either continue to look back at history or we can look forward. If we're still looking back at history, we then have a decision, okay, are we going to focus on all that car accidents back in the rearview mirror? Are we going to pay attention to all of the wonderful driving that's happening, to all the accomplishments? Because even the idea of getting rid of you know, critical race theory, well, once you ask the question of, okay, could that practice, once again, I'm not an expert on it, right? This is just me trying to pose questions from this side of the fence. <laughs> was that a flawless methodology? Was it perfect in what it was communicating and trying to achieve its goals? Well, if it's like most other things, no, it wasn't perfect. So before people get too frustrated about it being eliminated, maybe take a pause for just a second and say, okay, could we then replace this with something better perhaps? And what does that look like? Does it need to have its own framework that it's given its own nomenclature and system uh, that almost seems separate from just this idea of learning and wisdom and knowledge and history? Because I think too often when these things get put into boxes, just like a person or a whole ethnicity or, or history of lineage of a person gets put into a box of a color or something that you circle in on a Scantron, it can remove people from the realities of what has actually gone on and what lies ahead. And so following that would basically be the solutions. And part of what you showed me that this buddy of yours or this acquaintance at the gym showed you was somebody referencing about how white people have been wrong about everything and how, um, and how the white people have not done enough to fix the system for black people. And that's an interesting statement. And I'll pose this. Is it the white man's job to fix the system? No. If the white man couldn't fix the system for 100 plus years, is it still the white man's job to fix the system? And that's where I want to get into because I understand, once again, why somebody poses that. Because if the system is dominated by the decisions of white men, well then, all right, white men making the decisions, fix this shit. But that comes back into accepting responsibility for your own life. If you truly assess what is possible. There was a time when being black meant there was a high likelihood that you would be put in bondage that somebody might kill you in broad daylight for what you looked like, that they might hang you from a tree because of something that you said to one of their precious white women. There was a time where crazy shit was going on. And that's not to say crazy shit still doesn't go on. But anybody that tries to make it seem that Oppression today is equal or tantamount to oppression hundreds of years ago is absolutely out of their fucking mind because that's not the case. And because that's not the case, it means that people have way more freedom of their lives to go and make something happen for them, even with some of the antiquated laws that are still in existence on the books. There's a tremendous amount of freedom that you have. And what I and frustrated by within the black community is that too often, because typically these are the vocal people, 
Too often I find people making excuses or pointing at all the shortcomings of the system that are supposedly the reason why they're in a bad position or they're not where they want to be in life. What you find less vocal are people who are thriving and flourishing because they're not sitting around looking for the problem and somebody else, the white man, to solve it. Instead, they said, I bet I'm black. The deck is stacked against me. Cool. What moves do I have available? What can I do to get toward my goals? And the fact of the matter is, for the vast majority, I'd say 99.999% of all people and of black people and any group of people that feels oppressed, 99% of what you want to achieve in life and your ideal vision of life, if you've even done the work to create that vision, you can go do just fine. Right now. With the white man not lifting a finger. Where's the disconnect? I think the disconnect comes between what I was saying earlier about being obsessed, hyper-focused on the past, past, and also disconnected with who you actually are. Because I put it like this, man, because I feel like all of the the political statements I've made are out the way. I feel like I'm talking like a politician. If people don't know where they come from, there's a deep disempowerment there. And I, I, I don't have it perfectly figured out, right? I can't tell you who my great, 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 great grandpappy was and what he did and who was his great, 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 great. I can't do that. Sorry. And I've never sent my DNA off to some collection agency to send me back the results of who I am when more likely they're just using these as genetic markers so that they can create more sophisticated weapons to target very specific genetic populations who have self-identified as African-American, as white as Japanese, what have you. Once again, that's another conversation. But I think that disconnect comes between, it's like everybody wants to have some, they, the people want to win, right? It's a natural human desire to triumph, to overcome. And sometimes to overcome or triumph, there needs to be some hurdle. And that hurdle can either be something uh, intangible Or that hurdle can be a person. It can be a villain like we see in movies. And that culturally, the white man is the biggest villain of all in the black community. And I'm not saying that historically, that doesn't make sense. But my point still is, how long are we going to point fingers at some external villain all the while we've never bested the villain inside of ourselves? Because if people spent more time doing that, I promise you they would give less of a fuck about the outside villain and they'd realize that, oh, okay, I can create these villains. I can create these illusions, these mirages of all of this evil out in the world that's out to get me. And if people study the laws of the universe, if you focus on something long and hard enough, by God, the universe will do its damnedest to make sure it can make it happen for you. So if you walk around Oh, man, every cop is bad. All these cops just want to kill niggas. Hey, man, I hate to say it, but you're probably one of the people who is more connected to people who have been killed by police, have experienced negative interactions with police, so forth, you know, so on and so forth, because the intention is so hyper-focused in that area versus focusing on solutions, focusing on building community, focusing on, okay, damn, even if I thought the white man was the biggest enemy, I just met this one white guy, I like him I like him a good bit. I met this one white woman, I liked her a good bit. And just taking the time to shift that perception to realize it's one thing to refer to an institution, to a conglomerate, to a behemoth, which is what I think most people mean when they say the white man. They're talking about the institution. And that white man is actually comprised of all shades behind the front-facing white man, right? And if they took that time and that energy to get back connected with their own ancestral roots, to find the pride in who it is they are, and look at the victories, look at the wins, look at what they have overcome, instead of looking at how they've been oppressed, you're looking at the same uh, instance, you're looking at the same happening, but from a different side of the equation, from half full or half empty in that glass of water. 
And I think there's too much focus on the half empty and not enough on the half full. And if people could step more into the half full and move forward, there would not be this call of, oh, we need the white man to come in and fix it. No, because you're still waiting for Superman to come out the sky. What if I told you you are Superman? You are Superwoman. And that fuck the white man. Don't nobody care. Be the black man. Be the gay woman. Be the whoever. Go out and make the change you want to see. I get it. Some of these institutions, they're massive. But guess what? All changes start with, <laughs> with yourself. They start with small steps. They start small. They start locally. And then you build up a movement. Regardless of my belief or my perception of Black Lives Matter, I'll go ahead and tell you, it's a fraud. It's a fugazi. It's some bullshit. The organization. But guess what? That shit didn't, the movement, that, the, the buy-in that they got from a lot of the black community didn't happen overnight. Right? Any movement doesn't happen overnight. And if it does, or it's close to overnight, kind of similar to what Black Lives Matter was, uh, it's usually controlled opposition, historically. Right? So, at the end of the day, people need to stop worrying so much about the identity politics and actually say, okay, not as a black man, who I, how do I feel about XYZ, as Savon Malik Springer, son of Jonathan, son of Urena. What do I think? Mm. That's powerful. I mean, that's different. That's a different narrative. And I think that, you know, all this meandering I've done trying to just get out a lot of different thoughts that are too much. We already talked before we record, like, damn, this might need to be two parts. If people worry less about the identity politics, less about the optics and treated themselves just as much as others as a literally unique, special snowflake individual. I think in a lot of ways, we get to those solutions that people are asking for. Because then you're not trying to create a one-size-fits-all solution. Because even that approach of, oh, we got to do this for black people. Well, black people are an infinite number of uniqueness. Right? Of unique qualities, unique viewpoints, unique desires, unique fears, unique skills, unique histories. And I think that from my perspective, being a student of history and not just my own culture's history, right, or the culture I think is mine, a history of other cultures and other happenings, different parts of the world, part of why there's been this re-examination of all of this racial stuff is to distract people. Because the biggest class divide amongst people is not race and color, it's class, it's money. Because money is what makes this machine of commerce that is the world run. Back in the day, what brought the Spanish over here? It was money. They wanted to come, the Europeans, to find out what new trade routes, what spices, what herbs, what product they could get to trap out. It just so happened when they pull up, based on the stories, right? They see all these people flourishing, whether it's the Moors, whether it's the Native Americans, and then call it jealousy, call it set trip and call it hating. They said, huh, they've done so much that we have yet to figure out. We didn't even know existed. Hmm. Kill these niggas to take all this shit. So, even back then, it was about the bread. So, if people realize that if we're talking about an issue that really at the end of the day is about money, even when people talk about reparations, the white man fixing the system and changing these laws, usually those laws, all that they're trying to do at the back end of it is make it so that black people can make more money. From, from the shit I've looked at. Once again, I made my disclaimers, right? Law enforcement the same one. Gets back to the bread. So, at the end of the day, based on how shit is set up right now, black, gay, straight, had a dick, no dick now, didn't have a dick, have a dick now, whatever the situation, whatever little bubble you're in, but as you said, whatever sticker you slap on your chest that is anything other than white man, you can go out and make a billion dollars right now. Right now. They did this shit 100 years ago. They did it 1,000 years before. And it's going to happen in the future. 
Actually, we're going to get to the bag, bro. One way or another. You don't need a white man to give you your bag. You don't need a white man to tell you where you can go find your bag. The white man's not stopping you from getting your bag. The white man don't care. Honestly. They're just not in a rush to help you get that bag. Because they out there getting their own bag. And getting their own bag sometimes means they make policies, they make laws, they make this, that, and the third. That ultimately gets them more money. And sometimes that means that by them getting more money, certain things are inaccessible to certain groups and people. But as it stands right now, I don't have any worry that I'm going to walk outside my door and get snatched up and put in the bondage of slavery. I have no worry that somebody's going to yank me out of my car because they see me with my white partner and hang me from a tree. I don't get denied service when I go places. I was only denied service at Sprouts when I didn't want to put a mask on a year ago. Different story. Though, I'm tired of it. Different story. And, 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 and I, I don't mean to be callous because I understand some people can hear this and be like, oh, you're so narrow. There's so many more problems, bigger problems. I know, man. I'm just trying to paint the picture that all this animosity, it's not good. It's toxic, man. Hate is never going to breed anything other than hate. Hate does not breed love, bro. And I see too many people get into a hate mentality or a adversarial nature when it comes to these kind of conversations and topics, especially race, it becomes so adversarial that now you're just creating another line of hate, you know, where somebody makes a statement of, oh, all white people got it fucked up, white people wrong, white people while the world's messed up. Okay, cool. Let's play a little game. It's called mirroring. Let's go ahead and let's just flip-flop words. Man, black people why everything messed up, black people why the world savage, Black people got everything fucked up. Black people wrong about everything. Let that come out the the mouth of a white person. You already know what time it is, right? So it's like, I really try to move off of the universal laws and principles, man. Rhythm, reciprocity, right? These different things that you can't go wrong with. And if people are leading these discussions with animosity in their spirit, like, oh, we got to get back at the white man or the white man's on top. The black man should be on top. No, bro. Nobody should be on top. Nobody's on bottom. People are. We exist. We coexist. Sure, I understand. At the end of the day, somebody's going to have more money than somebody else. Someone's going to have more wealth, more fame, more whatever. So, yes, there will be a gradation. It shouldn't be. Hey, here's your life. Here's the parameters that everyone can play with and figure it out. Do some start on the higher rung on the ladder? Yes. Do some start a little bit up the tree? Yes. Do some start with not 14 fences in front of them before the tree? Yes. I wish that I could take that away from some people. I, I do. But if, if we're gonna just villainize individuals that just as you were born black, I was born white. I, Shoot of the draw. <laughs> I, we didn't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't pick to be white. I didn't pick to be black. I mean, I like, oh, let's pull, the, let's pull right. the slot machine and figure out what we're gonna be. You know, it's a blessing I'm here, and I don't know. I'm just trying to do the best that I can with what I have, and I feel like you're in the same position. Yeah. A lot of people, regardless of color, don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. And you made a really good point about people starting at different rungs. How we look on? But all I was going to say to leave it out on with, if anybody's listening to this and they're like, okay, well, what can white people do? What can anybody do? View everybody as your equal. View everybody as your community. Don't look at, oh, I can only need to do business with black people. I only need to do business with white people. Do business, good business, with people who do good business. That's a big part of how we fix the problem. Peace and love.